Each week we listen to an album, here's all our mind Just know it's gonna take about three hours of your time To hear us complain or praise each other's taste But no matter what, at the end of the day We're just best friends who love different music We are earbuds, earbuds, earbuds This is earbuds Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Earbuds. If you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. Tell us everything you're thinking about. We wanna know, we really do. Good or bad, good or bad. And if you don't wanna watch it on YouTube, but you think that's your only option, no, no, no. <laughs> find us on all podcast platforms and follow us there. You can download the audio only episodes and listen to them on your way to freaking work, baby. Oh my God. This is Earbuds. All right, this is Earbuds. We'll tell them hello. Hello, everybody. I'm just pulling up the lyrics quick. Yeah, I'm going to do that, too, while I give you a little chat about what the show is. We're buds, but most importantly, we're earbuds. Because while we are best buds, we don't always listen to the same music. So we said, why don't we tell each other about music we like, mm -hmm. and you'll hear about it. People like to listen to that kind of stuff. I hope. At if this you point. If you like this Doink, 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 doink. You're going to hear a nice review of the album today. And then maybe you'll say, gosh, I kind of like how these guys think. Maybe I want to hear them talk about another band. Maybe a band I've never heard of. Maybe I'll find a newfound appreciation for some new music as well and join on the journey that is Earbuds. Do it. Fine. That's great. So does that mean you liked the album? I'll never tell. Yee! Until we get into it. Okay. Well, what do we start with? You got any music news? <laughs> uh, this is our segment called music news no well um an album we'll probably get to soon mm. uh came out this week uh that i was excited to hear so i i didn't listen to this one as much as i probably normally would have mm -hmm. i mean this is my pick so i've heard it a million times so yeah. i don't need to listen to it as much but uh so i don't know it's a a, a, a little band called telephone friends mm -hmm. uh, a couple couple different guys from their own little projects all come together make it's just a fun little rock album that i've been cranking all week and i've been loving it it does take a lot of because i'll add everything to my list that, i mean i'll listen to a lot of recently added I listened to a bunch Whoa. of stuff, and then I got to fit yours in, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then I've got all these other albums I want to listen Whoa. to. And it becomes sort of a... Mm. Homework. Homework. But then I also have to listen to, okay, now I have to make a pick. So I have to listen to a whole album to see, is this something I want to bring to the table? Sure. Do, is this? What about this one? Maybe I'll do this one. So there's a whole thing. Not that it, not that I don't, don't like doing that. A whole. A whole thing. A donut hole in a donut hole. The hole has a donut hole. Look it up. It's verbatim what he says. <laughs> verbatim. verbatim. Look it up. It's verbatim what he says. Uh, so I'm just, and I'm not bragging that I listen to music. I'm just saying. It kind of seems like. Yeah, there's know. a lot of stuff that I that comes out and you go, I, got, I listen to this one. Landon picks an album that's an hour long. Yeah. I, and, I, and I apologize for that. But I did pick it. I knew that we weren't going to be able to get together last week. So I said, I know we'll have at least two weeks to listen to this. Yeah. So now's as good a time as any. Uh, so the album is, well, did you have any music news? No. Lady Lamb, the beekeeper. A.K.A. Lady Lamb. Uh-huh. A.K.A. Really just the one lady. And then, you know. Allie. Allie. And, uh, of course, the other instrumentalists play, mm -hmm. you know, it's, but it really is kind of just a it's solo. It's the singer songwriter yes, syndrome, right? It's yeah. their work, their music. But then when you get in the studio, it you is gotta a bring your freaking buds, right? Mm -hmm. I need someone to smack these skins behind me. I need, go, 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 go. I need someone to <laughs> slap these strings next to me. <laughs> I need someone to play something she played on here that I was that made me very confused. Yeah, we'll get into it. Okay. Maybe. Oh. oh. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> yeah. So what's your story here, Morning Glory? <laughs> Jeez. I told you not to ask, uh, call me that. Um Lady Lamb, uh I I just discovered Lady Lamb a few years ago, probably mm -hmm. three years ago at this point. Um 
the first album. I don't know. It came up recommended because I was listening to something else. I don't even know what else I was listening to. Isn't that crazy? That's insane this, how these things happen. This eclipsed whatever I was listening to. Uh-huh. And it was uh, the, her, the first album, actually, Ripley Pine, uh-huh. that I discovered. Listen to that. And then I randomly was just at a record store and I found it mm-hmm. at a record store. And I said, oh. so I bought it and mm-hmm. listened to it a bunch. And I said, I hate to say it. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan now. <laughs> And then, of course, <laughs> and you know, you listen to all the albums. Once you're a fan, you say, well, I got to listen to everything. And then I listened to this, the second album, and liked it, it even better. Mm-hmm. Then she has another album, full album. Uh, Dang yeah. it. I can't think of it. Hold on. It was right in my, Hold on, it was right in my head after the Tremors. Uh No. Even in the tremor. even in the tremor, yes, which is good. Mm-hmm. I like it's. She's veered recently into a little more. It's more produced. Which, Did you listen to her newest single from this year? I've listened to all that stuff. Yeah, because I listen to this one. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like I like it the new stuff too. Produ- but that's not the album. No, it's just a single. Even in the tremor is a little more. Produ- it's still. And that's. I mean, it's similar, but four I just, years old at this point. Right. It's just it has a little more of a sheen to mm-hmm. it that I I just I like this stuff because it feels like it was recorded in a basement. I get that, and I just like that. Mm-hmm. It's got that tactile. You can hear her vocal cords. That's that is something that will turn me off from. There's bands I listen to that I'll go back and I'll go. I was wrong about this album, but I was mm-hmm. like, but what what turned me off about it? I was like, it's the production. It's so yeah. I like when it sounds like they're not just throwing a bunch of money, even though that's not exactly the case. No, I mean, sometimes it is a stylistic, like, you know, sometimes you want to make more of a pop album. So you just, that's what you do. Which is fine. Just know that these two people in this room are going to be mad about it. No. And then a couple of years they'll come around to it and they'll go, I was wrong about you, Lady Lamb. No, I, I, I like that album. It's, I, I haven't listened oh, to it as much. Years. So, you know. <laughs> But I think it just uh, didn't quite capture me as much as this one did. And the first one. Uh, you know, maybe the first one's even better. I don't know. I just like this one more. And I thought this has a, f- a few more fast, rocky tunes probably than, than the first one. So I thought you might like that more. Um, Have you listened to the, the Ripley Pine remastered version from this year? Well, it's not all out yet, is it? I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm looking now. 2023 remastered. Maybe it is now. Smoking gun. I scratch well, my arm. No, she... I just leaned it on the table. She's don't doing worry. like a huge. It's like that album and like a bunch of stuff that was written around that time. Mm-hmm. And what's it called? In the mammoth, nothing. In the mammoth, nothing of the night. A huge 35 song, three hour collection yeah. of everything. That is not out yet. Okay. That's, That's what I'm talking about. There's a couple couple singles she put out. Yeah. So, anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Cool. Uh, so, not a big backstory. You just found it and like it. Found it and liked it. Oh, and then so you'll notice that this is signed. Yes. I just bought this on Discogs and they sent it and it was signed. And, and you said, didn't know that? No. Oh, I was cool. like, oh, cool. So I did that. I bought it. It wasn't from Discogs. You would think they would tell you if they're trying to sell it. Sure. But I bought an album from a band once and they just sent it to me signed with everyone. I was like, cool, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Great. So uh, that's always fun. You will notice also on the back, if you flip that bad boy around, it says Lady Lamb after in parentheses rock. I don't know about that. Joey's. Gonna, I don't know if if I would classify this as rock music. Well, take it up with the record store that. I do sold like the back this. art. I like the the font. I think that's cool. The it's, art the is bats cool and stuff. The the front cover is cool. The front is cool. Um, he's taking it out. There must be something inside. No. It's a head. It's a flat head. Oh, oh that's a record. A pizza. What the heck? No, nah, it's just kind of cool. <laughs> it's her. What do you want? 
If you want to know who it is, the who the beekeeper herself is. He's got a that's cool. You like that? Yeah, yeah I do. I'd make that all the movie. lyrics. Yeah. God, why don't I just look at that? When, when albums don't phone. come with record or, or okay, first of all, if you're if my album doesn't come with a record, I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna give the Discogs guy a bad score. Thank you. I'm not gonna return it. I'll say next time. Put the record. Send the in there. record. But like, if it doesn't come with lyrics, mm-hmm. come on. Give me the lyrics. I don't want to look at ge- lyricgenius.com or whatever. I know you're gonna put in. You get, you're gonna put in a poster that's folded into six. And I'm never gonna hang it up because yeah. it's got a bunch of crease lines in it. Sure. At least put the lyrics on the back of it, so I know what the <laughs> hell you're saying. Especially someone, someone like this. Uh, which is why she does include her lyrics. That because they are she so, says a lot of stuff. There's so much going on here that, I mean, literally, I mean, listening to it these past couple of weeks, this is the first time I've really sat down with the lyrics because normally I'm just like, oh, I like this song. And then I'm like, oh, I like this song too. Mm. And you pick out some stuff, but she has such an interesting voice and delivery that sometimes I don't know what she's saying and that's fine too. You know, it's one of those where it's like, I don't care. Can I ask you something? Okay. Because we've run into a, an issue with you. <laughs> no. Over the past couple There's episodes. There's no issue. <laughs> what is your issue? Because some of the stuff I brought, you're like, he's saying too much in a space. Are you saying a word wrong? I think it's just I like what I like, and I don't like what you like To as much. come to me <laughs> and go, and he put in like three words there, or it's, he's drawing out a word, and it could fit more words. <laughs> To then bring me this is almost to slap me in the face (laughs) where she is just, and I look, I like it. Aha. I like the album. It took me some getting used to, sure to acclimate to what is this, Mm -hmm. but to bring this to me is to spit on my grave. I knew that you would. I brought you just some little (laughs) things that people do that I don't even give a shit about to then bring me this. And she's like. Then my grandmother's sister was in the cave, and then you found her body, and it was fine. You'll be interested to find out that I'm not in love with everything that's going on here, mm. okay? Lyrically, and the, the fitting into spaces that don't quite fit. But that's kind of a, a folky sort of... Yes. There's like a, it's, a, it's, it's storytelling. Here's what I'll say. I find it works better here because these are, if you just read this, it is a poem. Yep. And she's setting a poem to music, basically. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about her first album is, well, she she said in her interviews and stuff that this album, was she was more specifically trying to make her songs structurally songs. She struggles to write choruses mm. so that's what she was really trying to write choruses for this album because the first one is even more if you had trouble acclimating to the sort of song structure here check out the first one and just see what you think because it is even more kind but of i don't even scattered. i don't mind songs that don't have choruses well i like when they sure, do sure i'm just saying that's kind of part of, that's kind of her thing yeah okay her thing is I just can't believe you'd bring this to me <laughs> at uh, this day of my daughter's wedding. Well, I think this is part of it too. This is, I know exactly. You know, when I when I heard it for the first time, mm-hmm. I said, "Oh, this is what this is. I like it." Yeah. So I'm going to keep listening. If your thing isn't that, and then you try to do that for one little line of one little verse, and you're squeezing something in that doesn't fit, that's when I say. Mm, I don't know. Mm. Maybe think about it. Think again. Mm-hmm. But I will say uh, some of this stuff I do bristle at. It's just sometimes it's like, and she's going and it's rhyming and then she'll fit something in and it doesn't even rhyme. Right. Well, I'm like, that's where I'm like, well, your thing is this. Mm-hmm. And now you're just, you got to get the thing in yeah, yeah. about the train. Yeah. I agree. That's it. I'm just, I'm not mad. I, I, like I said, I like the album just for you to bring this to me. Yeah, it's just so... it hurt your feelings, didn't it? <laughs> and I go, so he does like it. He just doesn't like it when I like it. And right. I get that. Yeah. I don't... I, when someone brings me something they like, I go, I don't like that. Just because they like it. I get that. Yeah. No, I, you don't have to explain. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's... Is this rock music? I think it's pretty rocky. 
it's sort of how would I classify this in a way that makes That's, sense yeah. to listeners? Great you question. Know, we have the angler here. Okay. Okay. If you, if you have if you live near a college town, yeah, there's a theater downtown in any college town where bands like this will play. Mm-hmm. Angler core. It, I wish she would come. If you said like I got this because I saw her at the Angler, I go, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I get it. Like there's a liberal college town where they go to see someone sing their little songs. I wish. I'd love to see her live. Did you watch any live videos? I I didn't watch any live videos, but I watched her do uh, Sunday shoes by like a lake. Oh, it was okay. just like a. It was sure. her. It was like a session. Piece. Sure, sure, sure. Well, there's some good live videos, but no live shows. But I will, I'll, I'll check them out. Check it out. She's she's great live. The band is ripping, and you're like, it's it's. It, and I I've said this about some of the stuff that you've brought to. Mm. It's the thing of if I was at a festival and I caught some of the show, I would stick around and then I'd go buy some merch mm-hmm. because it's just it has that thing. And then especially live. If you're not good live, I don't like you. Mm. So that's why I always will seek out the live stuff because it makes me respect you more if you're good. Mm. She's got the goods. And the band. The band's rocking. I love it. That's why you don't like the produce stuff as much. I want to hear. I want the real. Yeah. I mean, it, even we'll go back to our our little guys in Green Day. Mm-hmm. the early stuff is all i mean the very early stuff is like so unproduced that you're like i can't then they hit that sweet spot and then some of their most recent stuff is overly produced where you're like this doesn't even sound like a band mm. it sounds like a computer engineered yeah. that's why i'm kind of worried about the new blink album yeah but and and of course i still like all of the new Green Day stuff too, more than probably anyone else. Yeah, but I, but you do understand the. I know what's wrong with it. It's like Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Mm-hmm. I know why you probably have an issue with it, but I still love it. Not me. No, not you. I mean, people uh, don't listen to our other show. <laughs> our, they don't know I'm on your side. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you're a person online or like a film critic or someone who thinks they're funny yeah you probably think things are bad so like some stuff that everyone kind of agrees is bad you probably also agree is bad because you don't have an original thought (laughs) in your stupid head so you you don't have that sort of Mm. where you can distinguish between what you like and what other people tell you to like or not like right but we don't suffer from that, which is why we think no. we're good enough and uh, thoughtful enough to have a show where we talk about music. Right. So, anyway, what was the point? Um, I like Green Day and I like Indiana Jones. You like the raw stuff. <laughs> I like the raw stuff. I, I can appreciate the... So you like the live... You want to find the live version. Yes. What does it sound like when everyone's in the room? They're in the pocket, as you keep saying. I just like to know... I saw My Chemical Romance once, mm. and it was the worst live <laughs> performance I've ever seen. And I don't, people keep telling me over and over again how good My Chemical Romance is. Mm. And all I can think of, even when some, like a song will come on that I like of theirs, I can't help but think back to one of the worst live performances I've ever seen in my life. And I think, I don't care. I don't care. If I may. Mm-hmm. And I never, in my wildest dreams, <laughs> would think I would have to stand up for My Chemical Rum Bands. Okay. A band I also don't listen to. But I told you, I saw them at Riot Fest. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And they're, I knew every song in their entire set. Right. We watched them play for whatever, hour and a half. And I was like, just through osmosis mm-hmm. of, of listening to music and them being wherever their songs were played at the time. Of course. I was like, I know all these. I and I like teenagers. some of them. But they are they do sound good live. I don't know if they've gotten better. I don't know if it's because I'm sure when you're at a better. show where everyone around you is also singing mm. and you can't hear what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But I think also when you went to see them, they were pretty new and they were playing music. That's not what it, they do now. Right. 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 It was their first album. Still. They were, I'm not, I don't, I'm not standing up for them. I was just like, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty good. Right. Whatever. But it is that thing of 
if you if that is your first exposure to someone and then yeah. you hear the album and it's like okay well someone pieced this together it just feels it it yeah it just detracts a little bit like i know you couldn't you probably couldn't replicate this live yeah but then you hear a young Ali Spaltro or however you say her name mm. Spaltro Spaltro i don't know yeah buddy and she's she's hitting the notes and she's rocking out and she's playing the so the tempo changes and stuff. That's what and I know, especially with what she's saying. Yeah, which is just a story. Yeah, and then she's something else is going on down here. Yeah, it's great. It's great stuff, and he's and you, and she's doing it. And you're like, yeah. Uh, but and then it, and then that's what makes me mad too. Like no one knows this person exists. Mm-hmm. A talent like this. I wouldn't know unless I just accidentally happened upon it. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, we've talked about this before. It's there's probably a million of the most talented people you'll ever know that you will never, never know. know. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Do you have any? You didn't know about this? No, I didn't know who she was. Um, I wasn't. I didn't know what to expect with the music. My uh, my acclimating to it my, was just. Uh, <laughs> My aha was not that was not the way she sings. It was just more of, all right, this is, I would say more of an acoustic album. Um, there's some, there's some rockers on there, right? There's like two acoustic songs. There's it's the acoustic guitar. There's yeah. some slower bits through there. And so I went, okay. Yeah. I know what I'm listening to. So I listened to it through probably once mm-hmm. without paying too much attention to the lyrics. Sure. You have to ease in a little bit. But then I got into it, and um, yeah, I like it. Should we listen? Should we listen to it? Strike it up. Get some more. uh, We kind of talked about this before, but it will be hard to because each song is kind of like a story Mm -hmm. and like (laughs) has different movements. It might be hard to. uh, We can't listen to a five minute song. No, and all the way through. If you remember, I mean, I'll try to figure out sure where there are maybe a chorus or something I like, but mm-hmm. I also don't remember. Cause sometimes the song will change mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah, this is the one I like yeah, this, yeah. this part of, mm-hmm. uh, but I forgot it was attached to this part of the song. Right. So yeah, there's some like that. It's kind of fun, huh? but yes, that's what happens when you listen to music as your heart of course is beating mm-hmm. and the blood is going through your Vena cava. Not acoustic, just <laughs> clean. I know. As soon as this started, you were like, oh, no. Yeah. Were you? Not, oh, no. Just like, I was like, all right. I brought him something last week's school. And you're like, a lady? Yeah. I thought <laughs> Lady Lamb was just a tongue-in-cheek. That was a joke. Chamber. Always into the chamber. And in you, it moves the same. Even if you cannot feel how it moves, it does move there in you. Separate from the seams of my ribs. I know already how much TV will fail to comfort me in your absence. It's as though the night that never rises. Everything will do just what it does. Like a bullet in the barrel of a We're about halfway through the song. Yeah, now. it's hard because I'm like, where? What? What's the? What's the chorus? <laughs> That's here? kind of the chorus. The uh, 
but it changes every time yeah basically but it's that baba zaba daba daba baba baba daba daba yeah now what do we think of these lyrics lyrically you're 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 bristling at some of the stuff i bristle at of course yeah but i i do understand what she's doing um Uh, Because I was even with even as I start to listen, I go, "What do I listen to that's like this that maybe I could bring to the table?" And I'm just like, "I don't know." Uh, This the the songs are so much structured around the storytelling, and I'm like, "Do I listen to a lot of music that's like this?" It's like I kind of do, but it's not told in the same Mm -hmm. musical genre as this. Well, so that's I, okay. No, that's and I'm not even saying I'm going to bring that to the table this week. No, of course. I'm not. just trying to think. I'm like, who is this like? What does this remind me of? Sure. Uh, what are the lyrics? Come up with anything? No. Overall, I mean, I kind of did, but now I can't remember. Now that we have to do the podcast, sure. Can't write my notes down. I like the I like the lyrics on the album. I like what I like the uh, I don't know the idea behind each of the songs. I think is ties into music that I'm interested in her idea of, you know, what it is to be. A lot of them feel like she's just sort of having these disassociative uh, episodes where all of a sudden you're thinking of like, well, this is weird to exist. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden you go, I'm sitting here in a chair that someone like everything around you just stops making sense. Yes. And and, no, no, and not not the talking talking heads. heads. But kind of a lot of those giant suit. <laughs> so a lot of those, are, of course, this one is about the heart. It's about an artery in the heart. Yeah, bring blood into the chamber, always into the chamber, and in mm. you it moves the same. Even if you cannot feel how it moves, it does move there in you. And that's just kind of you know you might think well, that's a little repetitive. That's like a but it is an interesting thought, isn't mm. it? I like the uh, in that last little chorus, the like a bullet in the barrel of a gun. I'm hiding here inside for someone. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, God, I don't even necessarily fully know what it means, but I just know that I like that imagery. (laughs) And I think so much of that is the the way she writes is. And I think I've heard interviews where she will like a lot of these are dreams that she's had and then Mm. she will just write out a sort of poem of the dream so i think she's kind of interested in just the imagery as well and she paints a lovely picture i'd have to say um yeah yeah i i uh Kind of what you said. Okay, that thing just fell off the window, but it needn't matter anymore. No. Because as the sun sets in our little studio, if you're watching the video, you'll notice that the light changed not at all. And see, I can be a little fun with my words, too. (laughs) Of course, she mentions TV, which we have a running theme of on this show. Whenever a band mentions the TV, we drink our poppy prebiotic sodas. I said poppy. Um... I like the lyrics too. I hesitate to try and get too deep into each song because sure. there's so many of them and they're long. That's the trouble. So let's. I like this one. It's not my favorite on the album. Same. I think it's a good. Uh, it's a good opener. Here's what the album is. And I yes, think I so. miss. I said. I said acoustic. I'm talking more of the clean strumming. It's sort of a clean guitar sound. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more. They're slower. It's more folky than what you probably like. Yeah, and there's there's exceptions to that. You like I some like folk s- music? <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> thought of that. And you do, and yeah, I know of who course, those are. I know. But yes, more than what I, the, of course, also if you've been following what I brought to yeah. the show, mm-hmm. this is different. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what. It, it's just kind of a nice little change of pace. He I slowed think. it down a little. And aren't we happy about that? I wouldn't. I would argue that there's like one slow song. They're not tempo wise. They're not slow. I think you're just not. You're, I think we just listen to different music. And well, I'm not saying this is. I'm not saying music has to be. But it's a not slow. Way. If you put yeah. the BPM up next to other rock albums, mm-hmm. it would be. And this similar. is a rock album. Well, I'm not saying it's. 
I'm not saying it's Bayside. Uh, oh. I'm not saying it's bad religion. <laughs> but you are saying it's rock music. Would you agree that it's? I think if you have electric rock. guitars, I think it's indie rock. A drum kit, okay, but isn't that rock? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you grow up thinking, mm. uh, um. ACDC is like heavy metal yeah. and then you listen to it and it's like, well, that's just like rock. Yeah. But, but Landon back then, I mean, people was losing their freaking minds. The craziest like, thing they ever heard. Elvis is turning my kids horny. Yeah. And then you listen to it and it's like, I <laughs> think we should go. And you look down at your pelvis and you're like, Elvis is turning me horny. Wise men say. Cut to people <laughs> having <laughs> epileptic <laughs> the seizures in the. Only Frank loves Frank. We love Frank. I like this song. All right. Should let's we go to the next yes, one. Yes, please. This is where I want to get into This is it. where we kick it up a notch, huh? Yeah. This is where the BPM really gets me going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into this. And, of course... I listen to this song with billions of eyes. Find a metronome. Never heard of it. I have one on my phone. I'm just not going to pull it up. But this guitar is... This kind of reminds me of like Sleater Kinney... I don't know, bleached, maybe some. If you're. There we go. I'm just saying, tempo wise, you can have a fast indie song, yeah. indie rock song. And I'm not rock. saying music has to be fast. Reading the lyrics for the wrong song, I was so confused. My cat's name is Basil. There's not really a chorus in this one. It's just the da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this one. I, I, for some reason, this one doesn't let me skip to the lyrics, my darling, but, uh, I think of all the billions of eyes all looking at something different at the same time. And I feel nauseous. Mm -hmm. Some days I can only see into my suitcase. And then there's this, it's got everything I need. Plus some superstitious things I may also need. The way she fits that in there is a little, (laughs) I like I like that that part here. Uh-huh. This is about what being on the road. Yeah, being a musician kind of it kind of sucks. Yeah. You want to do it, but it's also like it's not what people think it is. Yeah, you Mu- want to do it, but it sucks. Music soothes, soothes the savage beast. The mm-hmm. pilot says to me, and he asked me to sing, but now is not the time. I just want to fall into a pile of warm laundry. I just want to keep very very quiet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I like is the thing before that of the kind of high I like is when I barely make the train. What? Go back and play from where I think it's coming up next. She's obsessed with being on a train. Yeah. That will come up a lot in all of the songs. <laughs> The train and the people with the seats smile big at me because they know the feeling. And for a millisecond, we share a look like a family does, like we have inside jokes, like we could call each other by little nicknames. And I could tell the story of how my Sally? 
Sully? She also talks about planes. This is another instance of her talking about a plane. She's talking about Sully. Of course, the, <laughs> the captain well, of the Miracle on the Hudson, they called it. Yeah. I, I like the uh, the kind of how I like when I barely make the train and the people with a seat smile big at me because they know the feeling and for a millisecond we share a look like a family does. Mm. Like we have inside jokes. Like we could call each other little nicknames. This the this song. By the time I get here, I'm like, okay, I get what she's doing. Like I get what. Not in a not in a bad way. No, oh, like okay. I figured out your little trick. I mean, I get, I get the music. You get the I get, vibe. I get, I get the, the vibe. The, yeah, I get that these are stories, and that's why with these, I felt like I really had to listen because mm-hmm. there's so much going into. Like you said, some of them are dreams. Some of them are almost like. This is like a stream of consciousness. Yeah. Like this going to the inside joke or goes into the, the nicknames and then going into a very specific story about her great grandmother's sister. Yes. A story they would, you know, in her family that has nothing to do with being on the train. Right. But it makes you feel like these people are all family mm-hmm. and this is a story that's been passed down yeah. to your family that you all talk about every time you get together. It's just, I just like that. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. And I like, cause it goes back to some of the stuff that we've listened to of, I like when people are wondering about life mm-hmm. and like, you know, that feeling of when you connect with someone without saying anything of, this specific scenario maybe or some other version of that where you connect with another human just by sheer humanity we have this sort of connection and it's it's just it's these little things Mm. that only only people observant enough can point out and put to words in a way that make you go like yeah we are kind of isn't that cool isn't that nice to think about? We exist on a uh, on a planet where we're all looking at a million different things, but mm-hmm. also that that same thing of the billion eyes all looking at something different at the same time. But also we have these moments where we connect without having said a single word to each other, or knowing anything about each other. It's just beautiful, isn't it? These are the when you listen to a song, what do we like about it? We like that the songwriter Mm -hmm. also understands this, and not only maybe she's putting it in a way that you haven't thought of, but just the fact that they're putting it into a song Mm -hmm. and going, Oh, they they think about this too, and it also makes me think, Oh, yeah, you can write a song about that, or you can make a film about that if it's a film, you know, like these moments where you like this, very specific to getting on the train, having that moment with someone, Mm -hmm. but also to internalize that and think about that. And like, what is that Mm -hmm. to look at someone and they kind of give you a smirk as like, yeah, been there. You know, you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You understand why they're giving you that face. They understand why you're kind of looking at them. Like almost missed it. Right. You know? Right. And that leads into this whole spirals out into. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why couldn't we all share this story about, my fan, you know, yeah. just as you, as you roll that snowball down the big old hill. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, of, and of course it's not, you know, necessarily an original thought, but by God, it's beautifully put in my opinion. And I think the way it's put here is, is original. The idea yeah. behind it, whatever. I think so. Yeah. There's only so much stuff you can talk about. I mean, God, what are songs about food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which we'll get to old milk gas, duds, old gas station signs. Which we'll get to. <laughs> That's not in here. All right. Do you All like right. the song? This one you like a lot. Yeah, and I like the the it's chorus. Catchy. That's not really. It's words, catchy. But yeah, and and it is funny knowing that like she's like I need to be better about writing choruses. She was like, she's like it needs one. I just don't have. I don't have one, but we can just do this. And I like when she says millisecond. So you like that. That's interesting. Yeah, because I like when her voice goes down. Millisecond. <laughs> and live, and she does it live, and everyone kind of cheers. So they're like, she did it. Because <laughs> people are kind of stupid, you it's know? It's one of those. 
it's like inside when you, joke. Like, yeah. I know this song and you don't. Yeah. Because you took me. Or it's like when you see those videos of like uh, Taylor Swift live and she like kind of does a, a different run. Yeah. A vocal run than she does on the album and everyone loses their shit. And you see 500 million TikToks about mm-hmm. it. And they're like, she did the note. And it's like, she just goes up a little more. And you're like, <laughs> People have been doing this for years, including her. Mm. Anyway, sometimes you, you, it's cool. That's what I like about live music. You can change stuff. Yeah. I like when people do that. I don't need to make a million other Here's people. Here's why I don't my, like it. Okay. Because when I'm in there, I'm in the pit, I'm second <laughs> from the front, and you're singing along, and then they change something. And you're like, so you're I like, pizza. Oh. Yeah. And then you sound stupid. And then, yeah. And they're like, we don't do that at the live show. We don't show. say pizza anymore. <laughs> I'm like, every song's about food. Food. Old gas, gas station, station signs. signs. And they're like, that's right. That's why they go mob- mobile, mobile, mobile. And that's why this next song is about a little purple orange, or what I like to call mm-hmm. a violet clementine. You build a nest of yellow yarn. You I'm going to play this whole one. The yellow yarn is you kind of have to. to break you because it changes into a completely I'm, different I'm gonna, song. I'm going to skip ahead here soon. You hear the banjo, and Joey, at this point, just turns off his... I says, no banjo. No, no banjo. <laughs> That's because my dog was scratching at the door. No banjo. No banjo. Damn, boy. It's not a bad name for a dog. Pretty good. It's like Banjo-Kazooie. I think this is one of my favorite songs on the album. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Yeah. You, hey, listen. On it, I'll be honest. Listen, you can listen to yourself. That's yeah. the point of the show. Yeah. Check I this. I can't. I can't hand feed you the whole thing. You want to hear this one? I think it's about to change. Yeah. Listeners, you can hear that it got faster. There's Landon's bass. This is where he said, I'm buying the album. I think it's kind of synthy, right? Yeah, that's a little synth bass, probably. Is that me? Sweats ignored. Whoa! This isn't rock. This doesn't rock you enough. All right, we'll pause it there. You get the idea. No, go to the next. Play it a little longer. And you're only a handsome animal. Keep your silence golden. And what is important? You're only a handsome animal. You thought it was two songs. It was actually three. Now skip ahead a little bit, just so we hear the nice build. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> You're marching down the hall. Yeah. yeah to, you know, do something. <laughs> the Hall of Justice. Oh. Release the Lady Lamb cut. Yeah, I like this. I like the, uh, the what's called here is a refrain mm. sometimes. Maybe a chorus. I don't know. Keep your silence golden and words important. You're only a handsome animal. Mm. That I think that fits the theme of the album, right? Yeah. I would think so. That's what humans are. You're sexy, <laughs> little wild beasts, okay? Yeah. 
You're still an animal. I don't care if you're Henry Cavill. <clears throat> what are you looking at? I'm just looking at some of these other. Blood is let and tears are kept in hollow chest while sweat's ignored. However spent, our tears are sweat. Just keep secret and strewn from pores. Just kept secret. Just kept secret. Kept secret. You build a nest of yellow yarn. You hope to God the yellowed yarn is soft enough to break your fall. Should you What fall, is that? Should you fall? Because <laughs> when someone says something to me so much, it uh, must be important. Yeah, that's kind of the opening salvo, isn't it? The whole For like the first, first half of the minutes. song. You build a nest of yellow yarn. You hope to God the yellow yarn. <laughs> You build a nest of yellow yarn. You hope to God the yellow. Now, what's interesting in the album, it says, you hope to God the yellowed yard. I yellowed think that's a yard. T- I think that's a typo. It sounds like she says yard. It does. <laughs> I guess I just always. I thought she did say yard because I looked. Okay. No, did I? Play it. Yep. Yellowed yard. Yellowed yard. You build a nest of yellow yarn. You hope to God the yellowed yard is soft enough to break your fall. Should you fall? Should you fall? It's just kind of a you as an as a handsome animal, and I should know, as I do look like Henry Cavill. Yeah. Oh, that was you. You you build like a a say a bird Mm. builds a nest for protection. You build a nest of yellow yarn. Now, I think yellow yarn is there's probably some meaning to it, but you can make of it whatever you want to. Yeah, I You're don't wearing need to, I a don't, yellow shirt. I don't need to know your every. I don't need to know what you mean by everything you say. Right. I'm not one of those. No. I'm a cool uncle. Just if if you fall, you hope to God the life you've built is strong enough to break your fall, or uh, sorry, soft enough. Yes. It's just kind of a vivid imagery, isn't it not? You're like, God, yellow. That's like bright. (laughs) (laughs) I just like the gang vocals at the end where everyone's kind of shouting different stuff. And you're like, oh, my God. And then it goes. And you do this. (laughs) (laughs) You walk down the street. You're kind of a stop motion guy from the old from the old Rankin Bass. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a good song yep uh and you start to hear and you go oh she's got a banjo maybe that's her maybe she's playing the banjo she probably is, she is. maybe she's got a friend playing the banjo you got a horn i've a got horn. it right here she's playing bass guitar banjo keys and vocals marco buccelli is drums and percussion nadim issa is mm-hmm. organ and vibraphone which is uh, vibraphone who also produced the the uh record TJ Metcalf backing vocals. Gab- Gabriel Birnbaum is baritone saxophone. Nick Grinder is trombone. Cole Kamen Green is trumpet. Gang vocals. Jacob Augustine. Dup Crossan. Dup Crossan. <laughs> TJ Metcalf and Elizabeth T- Talon. So that's interesting, isn't it? Dup Crossan was on this. So no synth bass? No. Mm, interesting. Well, it says keys. Keys, maybe. Allie played keys. Maybe she did that. Maybe she did that. I think live it is a little, but because she only has like three people with her. It could be, right? Yeah. Or else it sounds really like like mutant. (laughs) It sounds like a synth bass. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. I believe one thing and do another. Mm. Perchance I'm a heretic. What? Johnny Cash, how we doing? You hairy ticks. <sighs> oh. Hair, 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 
words you're gonna finish your neck you're gonna drop your gun okay. doop a doop 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 about this it's good yeah what do you like about it it's kind of rocking it's like the drums are distorted yeah everything's turned up in the studio <laughs> yeah it's got a little yeah it kind of sounds like it's a little it's over it's a little it's, it's a little a, red line kind of red lining she's like i don't care it's about it galilei 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 let's ponder the true builders of the pyramids and then let's order in that's a yeah, later lyric. I don't lyric. see that on here. That's a later lyric, and it's kind of bigger font than everything else. So, yeah. What do you think this is? Sort of a, a uh, armchair philosopher's sort of... I mean, you've got the idea of the heretic, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about... Actually, guess what, bitch? The sun go around the earth. Right. And you're like, no. No, it revolves around <laughs> me. I think you're right, I'm not. <laughs> The earth goes around the sun, ding dong. Uh -huh. But you can't tell anyone that. Because I, I was like, what is, what's her, there's a lot of religious, there's a lot of religiosity in this album. Right, which is interesting because uh, I know everyone's going to think, he picked another freaking Christian artist. He, this guy's obsessed. And I looked into it. She says, I've never been religious. I'm just interested in i i took it from what i took it i took either she's not religious or she was raised religious well, yeah i think that's more of it but she just grew up with she, yeah that sort of imagery sp sprayed at her which is always interesting and it, it 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 puts me in mind of a quote by one of my favorite authors mr jonathan lethem mm. who uh and of course you know jonathan lethem Right, he did the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> but uh, those people out there who know, know. And those who don't, don't. Okay. But uh, everyone, write this down. Lennon's a gatekeeper. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I don't know. His, his, pro his biggest book is Motherless Brooklyn, The Detective Who Has Tourette's. It's a long title. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great author. Anyway, he... he wrote this uh, essay about how after his mother died, basically the quote is uh, something like, not a single work of mine will ever be uh, without some sort of nod or inspiration or be affected in some way by my mother's death. And it, it just seems like that applies to religion for people that applies to religion for me in the stuff that i consume mm. like there's not not a single thing that i consume will not be in some way talking about the bigger sort of spirituality of uh, at least the stuff that resonates most with me because i was brought up that way because it's what i'm still interested in thinking about um it's there's just it seems to follow me everywhere joey and I think it's most interesting because if you're not questioning your existence and your purpose on the earth, mm. you what? I mean, maybe maybe I have it all wrong, but I feel like that's the most important and honest question to be asking. I was going to recommend something to you outside of the podcast, but okay. looky where we're at. <laughs> we're on the podcast and now it's come up. Have you heard of going to church? No, <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it. Do you know? Do you know the YouTube sensation known as Rhett and Link? Yeah. Do you know these two guys? Yeah. 
I've never really, I know about them. I uh -huh. know about their channel. I've seen a few of their videos and I go, they're not bad. They were Christian guys, right? Yeah. And I don't think they are anymore. I just listened this year. They just put out two episodes. It was, it was called, they did one guy's episode of their, they have a podcast and it was called Rhett's Deconstruction and right. Link's Deconstruction three years later. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Deconstruction as I know it means you were the religious and you ain't religious no more. <laughs> So I said three years later. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. So I kind of started to listen to one. I was like, you know what? That I, went, I, I, I went back. <laughs> yeah. I went, you know what? I'll let Landon listen to it. <laughs> I went back to three years ago when they did their first one where they basically were very nervous. Sure. And came out and he, it was Rhett episode first or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's about two hours of him breaking down the steps that he went through from like, teaching at a church basically mm -hmm. these two guys that worked at a church right and going through very interesting mm. leading to where he's at now which is not necessarily it's more of a agnostic point of view sure but they they're like we fully understand like how fans are going to take this we already have seen the comments of people being like right yeah you moved to los angeles and you're not religious but yep. the whole the part that's interesting still is also like there's you're still thinking about okay then what is the purpose of this Right. Which I think some people that are just aren't religious or never were, mm -hmm. or their parents weren't, they sometimes they just don't think about that stuff. But what, when you grew up that way and then you kind of have to, you find your way out of it, or yes. you just think about more what that means. I'm not saying everyone that wasn't religious doesn't think about this, but no, of course not. You have this thing and you go, well, then what is this? Because some of this can't be disproven. Or it, or it was. So it's like, well, then why do people think this? Mm -hmm. And that leads you to, why do people think anything? Why do people think about these other religions? Right. And they're, well, I'm, I mean, they're, I would listen to those. They're pretty interesting. I'll check it For out. For both of them. Sure. They both did one that's like hour and a half that just shows their thought process. I'll check it and out. I was like, God, I want to talk to them more about this. And then their new ones are kind of weird. But it's more about like where are we three years on from that and what's. Sure going on well that's what's interesting about um how he's an annoying person but uh pete holmes <laughs> he often is talking about that type of thing with very like spiritual yes like, and with, with very interesting people who mm -hmm. on both sides of the conversation that it's just always interesting uh, i haven't listened to that in a long time but because he is an annoying person yeah and so. he'll, he'll give you his I'm not gonna get into it. Let's no, review no. Pete Holmes podcast. <laughs> but I think there's an interesting, like you said, when when albums talk about that, and it's like that can come from any sort of music you listen to. When you yeah. listen to the lyrics, and you go, "Oh wow, this is all very similar." About what is the point? Yeah. or How are they viewing this? Well, because so. the the next song, Sunday Shoes, is basically about like heaven and going to church yeah. and like. <laughs> And she was asked specifically about that, like, is are are you religious? Is this a religious track? Is this a Christian song? And she was like, um, no, I've never actually thought of it that way. I mean, I grew up religious, but I've never been religious, and I've never really been spiritual. It's yeah. just what came to me, basically. That's, that's what I, I I didn't think she was. I I didn't think so either religious. until Even, I especially Heretic. Read the song that is about that they're right. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, the course. heretic is the correct person in the song. It's mm -hmm. it's Galileo or Copernicus, people that right. had the correct idea, and, and because were... of the church could not right. tell their idea, right. And then you, of course, you are going to be talking about black holes. What you know about the stars? We don't care a bit because we know in our hearts we are the only ones. We are the favorite. Mm -hmm. We don't care what you see in the sky. No, we don't care what you see in the sky. Uh, Heretic, this is not just house arrest. Don't spend the rest of your life taking back what you said because you and I are concentric. Let's learn about, about black holes. Unplug the television set. TV. <sighs> let's ponder the true builders of the pyramids and then let's order in. Because... Kind of by the end, though, she is kind of like, if you're a heretic, then so am I. Mm -hmm. 
and though there is this sort of like who cares mm. <laughs> of like let's ponder the true builders of the pyramids and then let's order in and watch because it's like who not who cares it's not who cares but, no but but there is this idea of when it's you sitting with your friends and philosophizing and going like we're doing now you you talk about it mm-hmm. and it's like then it, it turns into that stuff and then right. Let's talk about black holes. And it's all this stuff that is almost, it's real, but it's theoretical. It's, and yeah. does it affect us? Mm-hmm. Like, what is the truth? This is the truth. Right. Who built these? Like, why did they do it? Was it religion? Was it aliens? All these different things. And then, all right, well, I'm hungry. You know, like, yeah. okay, we can sit around and bullshit about this stuff all day. Right. Well, and then it, it, and it is kind of, well, back, let's, Let's just get back to our human basic animal needs. Mm-hmm. I gotta I'm eat. Hungry. It's just interesting because, uh, and uh, it's like Tyree said in Too Fast, Too Furious. Mm-hmm. I'm hungry. That's right. And by the way, it's a catchy song. Mm-hmm. Great little chorus, don't do, you do, think? Do, do, do. Sun is burning a hole in your head. The sun is burning a hole in your head. The only thing I wish by the second one. Uh, by the second chorus, I think it shouldn't go back into the sort of asymmetrical, sort of unsyncopated, where it go, where it co- it goes back to the. I think it goes back to that well one too many times. It's such a strong chorus that I wish it would just do the, which it does by the end when she's saying, "If you're a heretic, then so am I." It just stays. Sh- just stay on the straight path there you for think a little bit. I think it's just so strong. There's a little too much spice in the chili. There's a little too much. And I think that might be, that's just kind of her deal, which I like. But also I think every once in a while it's like, but you just have such a good song here. Mm-hmm. Let's just let it play out a little bit. We don't need, like, it, it feels like sometimes, and not just her, a lot of people do it. Of like A lot of people are saying... We know you can do that. You've done it. Mm. We love it. But just just give us the song straight, baby. Just mm. I love that chorus. Just let me hear it a couple more times just right on through. I don't I know you can do the unsyncopated sort of off rhythm thing. You picked the album, not me. All right. Sunday shoes. Okay, that was a great. <laughs> okay, I literally cannot I like Heretic. I think it's a great song. Yep. And now Joey's falling asleep. He's tucking himself in. I said, okay. He's getting his sleepy time tea. I need to listen to. And I feel bad because I think this song's about a real thing. (laughs) (laughs) You think that happened? Yeah, so I got back out of bed. <laughs> so I got to put my pants on for this one. Just this is true, also. <laughs> People cheer there too. Yeah, they all throw pancakes at the stage. <laughs> I don't think it's slow, but just for the playback of the song, I'm like. Time was swept away <laughs> in oceans of praise. We talk about how we're headed. I don't care about the tempo. Even the acoustic song still has a pretty. This is the one I watched her do live, and I'm like, how are you doing that? <laughs> she's good. Because she's telling the story. I'm like, how do you remember all them lyrics? Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. We shall all become a phenomenon. Hmm. Doesn't that just make you into the song? Doesn't that just touch you in a way? My f- maybe my favorite. Last part. Carried home the 
sky. <laughs> Hold on, what are you trying to find? Here, this is good. Yeah. But don't worry, my love. It will feel so nice on yes. So nice on yes. Okay. That's the part you wanted to hear? No. It's going to get there, but we can't listen to each of the whole songs. I like... <laughs> Just read the part you like. Yeah. I like it comes next. So Lay to rest. You don't know, like you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. She has to sing soul for another minute. I know. <laughs> but oh, I say that and you're like. so <laughs> <laughs> By your mother and your father and you. This is what I thought was a real story too. This part. Shh. Favorite color. You. You will become your most favorite color. That's that's the part I like. Yeah. That's a great lyric. Mm-hmm. Maybe one of the best on the album. Yeah. You when you die. You'll become your favorite color. What a good way to think about it. Yeah. Everyone that listens to this podcast is always writing songs about how it's scary to be dead. And you're going to be Jack Skellington. <laughs> and all your coffin. Yeah. Well, guess what? Think about it this way, jackass. <laughs> You'll become your most favorite color. And like the dinosaurs, discovered and laid to rest. May so I- don't you fret for your baby sister now. May I ask you a question? Sure. I've read two accounts of this story, of this song. Okay. One is that it was written about her sister that died. I don't think that's true. And then I read other ones that was she's like, I made this up. Yeah. I, from what I heard, it was a dream she had. Because I, I read it somewhere, and then I listened to it live, and I'm like, he can't. That's a great song about someone that died. Mm-hmm. And then later I read that it, it's fake. And I'm like, what the hell? I think it's just you can't just put stuff on the internet. It's still <laughs> no, I still like it's the a, song. It's a good song, yeah. But I thought her sister died. I don't think so, but uh, maybe I don't know. I don't think so because what I then read later was that she found out her dad and her stepmom were going to have a kid mm. when she was twenty, mm. and she had this thought of like, what does that mean to be twenty years old and have a and baby? You're sister. going to have a baby sister that's a step, you know, like. Mm-hmm. How do you get there in your life, essentially? Sure. With the probably the idea of what your family was going to be like when you were a kid. Right. My parents are going to stay together. My, You know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, I'm 20. My dad's having a new child with a new family. Hmm. And she had a dream about that, essentially, and like yeah. having to protect this kid. And she said she put that stuff in there about the wolf and whatever. So yeah. I believe that one more than someone on Wikipedia saying she wrote this about her sister. And I'm like, huh? So it kind of is, but not really. Sure. It's like, what I don't think mean? anyone died. I don't think it's a, about no, an actual no. death that has touched touched her life. But it's still, a, you're doing a, you're thinking about that. Well, of what, course. Would that... Well, and yeah. And like you said, what a, what a beautiful way to, to think of the end of a life and what you become. Even though you made it up for likes on YouTube. <laughs> Just kidding. God, I'm sorry. You almost made me spat out spit. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about for that one? I like that song. Yeah, it's a good song. Just listen to it. I like this one. Yeah, this is great. I think it's my... She's obsessed with the train. Orange. Orange. She is yawning. And though this side is common, I am abruptly mesmerized. And it strikes me in this This is where I get out my little... For the first time in my life, how strange we all are. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And you're just grooving. And And hold on. This is where Was I born alive? If I've been asleep this whole damn time, dreaming <laughs> up the light, will I wait to find that I'm deep in the woods and I'm snarling on all fours? 
Lamont's holding up a sign in the back of the venue says, Lady Lamb, I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> spat out spit. I love you, spat out spit. Now, what do you think of this? I could be cracked open like a cartoon watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> see the solar system suspended in me. So funny. It's the same one you <laughs> that pulses and spins. We're just made of flex of the heavens. Shut up. Spat out spit. We are filled with the gore. <laughs> Filled with the gourd. From long, long <laughs> before. And through starting wars. To make you see me a warrior. Uh, okay. I like when she says that. I left my body in the bed, but my head floated through the ceiling. I left my body in the bed. Hmm. <laughs> and my animal heart is pumping that animal, animal, animal blood. blood. And remember why I picked this album, because that little freak on the Bayside album mm -hmm. said something about what those animals... Yeah, and she says animals a lot on this album. She's kind of obsessed with animals in a she different loves way. She trains, planes, and animobiles. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on our TikTok. Spit. This uh, I love this song. I'm gonna I'll probably forget to say this later because I keep wanting to ask what's your favorite or least favorite song on each album we go through. Yeah. This is my favorite yeah, song on This the album. is a great song. I didn't want to like it just because the name is Spat Out Spit. But it's so cool. It just makes me think of Spatting Out Spit. Just a big old Luger. Yeah. But it's just, we're just made of flex of the heavens, spat out spit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and cartoon watermelon. Yeah, that's funny. She's thinking of Gallagher getting his own little TV show. <laughs> I could be cracked open like a cartoon watermelon. This is my favorite song on the album. I think it's the best lyrically, I mean, of mm -hmm. what I'm interested in. It's that, what we were talking about. Yeah. Just the idea of all of a sudden you're just like, what the, what is this? Yeah. Why are we talking like this, but the monkey at the zoo pick his butt? But humans also pick their butt. They yawn. Yeah, I do. Humans yeah. yawn. Cats yawn. With the that's what I love that it just starts. And again, is a song the best vehicle to talk about this? I don't know, but it is because this song is fucking awesome. I'm gonna listen to it. I might not read a book of poetry. Right. That's I the, might. Yeah. I might, but I'll be more interested probably to hear a catchy chorus. Now I'm just. Was I born? I know the the album that I'm probably gonna pick for next week just yeah. doesn't have as good of songs. Just the <laughs> it's not about the you know the lyrics are just not <laughs> good. It's not this like we're we're not gonna have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I didn't think we would for Bayside, and we went for like two and a half hours. So yeah, we always find stuff to talk about. Oh, and by the way, I listened to yeah we didn't even do a catch up on because uh, I listened to uh, in Terabang and then the Blue and Red. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great stuff. You like them? Yeah. I'm back on Bayside, baby. Those two new EPs, it's like, what the, how'd you come up with these songs? It's not like my favorite music of all time, but they're just great Bayside. I'm like, these guys are rocking out yeah. again. And then I did they're look clever. up and he did, his teeth are different. They're different. He got new I got, teeth. I was worried because I was like, he's not going to sound the same. Yeah. yeah. Like Freddie Mercury. But I just look at him. I'm like, you're different. You're different now. They're anyway. great. So, yeah. I, I did listen to Bayside. Uh, I did listen to Bayside. Good. <laughs> I listened to Switchfoot, Oh Gravity. Oh, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. It's probably their best album. Yeah. I'm try I'm like, why? Maybe I don't like the cover art. I'm like, what, what What? turned me off about this? I don't know. Because I And I knew all of it, too. I was like, no, yeah. I have listened to this one. Yeah, it rocks. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's... It's I forgot Awakenings on there. Awakening. It it rips. I listened to it on the way to we were filming something. I was just like, this is awesome. I feel great. Amateur Lovers is just a fun one. Yeah. And you can just tell they they probably just did it right there in the room. Mm -hmm. He just sit with your guitar. Yeah, there's one microphone in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like some of the stuff on the new Bayside album. Yeah. No, it's like, that's great stuff. So I, I don't have much to say about this. In this life. You're stubborn to the core. It's just a great album. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll yeah, go see some him. weird stuff going on too. Which is anyway. I'm fine with. I love it. It's good weird stuff. Anyway, I love this song. Will I awake to find that I'm deep in the woods and I'm snarling on all fours? Maybe those new bass side EPs are my favorite music. Who do you care? Keep who, going. Who do you care? <laughs> <laughs> and just the idea of looking at someone yawning. Yeah. And that unlocks this sort of whole thought of like, was I born wild? Have I been asleep this whole damn time? How strange we all are. Animal hearts pumping that animal blood. Because I've, and I've, strange. I've had this exact experience. Of course. That's the thing. Of course. It's usually I'm watching someone eat. That's and when it happens like, for me. I'm doing this. I'm like, what the? F-? If I'm watching. You don't think evolution's real? I'll it, say that. I'm eating with my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rhett Link. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, um, for me, it's when someone's alone eating, like at a restaurant. Like you, you went out to a restaurant mm-hmm. by yourself and are just sitting down and eating. There's a whole story there. Yep. Why are you alone? That's when I start to spiral into then I'm like, well, these people are, and then they're going to go home. You're having that yeah, thing yeah, of yeah. everyone's got their own yeah, and then life. You're like, what am I who cares? Yeah. But also, isn't that beautiful? But isn't that what makes it special? Honestly, that's like when my girlfriend Penny licks me. It's beautiful and strange. I read a note on this song. <laughs> um, that, this that it's about oral? Oral sex. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think it is. <laughs> and she sings about doing the nasty on this album yeah but I, I don't don't turn this into some sort of this flowers a vagina painting <laughs> yeah cause I don't I mean maybe but song but it's different now isn't that interesting i just like that okay i was just thinking maybe it is about oral <laughs> you think it is do we get to the outro already this one's short not really short this is an outro but it's like three minutes long If you see someone playing this at a show mm. and their drummer's just back there, doom, 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 and she's up there doing a little boom, yeah. boing, 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 talking about stable tables, taking her eggs somewhere else. Yep. And you're like, God, that's about oral. Yeah. Get to the get to the end because this is my favorite, maybe my favorite part of the album. I'm not gonna skip any further. I'm worried I'm gonna miss it. The build up, I just love this. I love this drums. <laughs> We will crane our 
Jesus. <laughs> now the guys. <laughs> we will crane our necks. It'll happen we later. <laughs> and you. And at this point, she just kind of backs away from the mic. Maybe she turns and faces the drummer. She's looking at the drummer. She's looking at the bass player. They're, on, they're syncopating. And then they just rock out. Yeah. That's awesome. Flash from the Geico commercial comes out, starts doing this, and they're like, you're hired. <laughs> I love that. If your guitar part is catchy, you're good. That little lead. This isn't rock. All right. That's not rock music to you? Yeah, I mean, it could be. You're, just se- you're sexist. Just That's what it is. No. If it's not a 60-year-old bald guy <laughs> singing it, you would call it rock. That's what it is. Maybe if it's a little is. five-foot lesbian, you say no. Mm. I say do not put Prince's <laughs> rock after after. Like, after what? after. Huh? After what? After after. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on. Why do they say it's about oral? <laughs> oh, I'll I'll tell you. Pull, it, pull up the... Because I read the same thing, too, of course. And I so, was like, I don't think so. Cause okay. I, I heard her talk about where some of these lyrics came from, and it was not about that at all. Well, a Go penny ahead. lick is a small serving of ice cream. Right. Which was licked from a glass after having been bought for a penny. Um, the glass was then returned after eating out the sweet treat. Okay. I guess that Putting is. the entire piece together. Uh-huh. Now you're with me. Putting the entire piece <laughs> together... The song is about satisfying sexual desire through oral sex with partners <laughs> with which the female narrator, Allie, is not in or desiring a long-term relationship. She will thus take her eggs with her. The unstable table is the other, who should pay compliments on parting, e.g., you have lovely eyes, but expect nothing more as she does not wish to start a family. Now I have a question. Okay. You say this I young mean... woman is uh, queer. Yes. So she's not, this is not about a guy. Well, I don't know if she was out at mm-hmm. the time of this album. Maybe she was, maybe she was with guys. Maybe she, maybe likes- she was. I just, she's in a long term relationship with a lady, as far as I know. But does it have to be about oral? <laughs> I mean, can't it just be about I mean, a little s- dish and you stick your tongue in it? They're having sex. They're having sex, sure. But, but you also don't get pregnant every time you do that. Hold on, I got to check m- with my kids. <laughs> I got 102 kids. An interview I read uh, about the, specifically about the we do not wish to make a baby mm. and we were not built to raise this city up. She said her and I think it was one of these guys that comes up, I think TJ Metcalf maybe, who's on a couple of these songs as the uh, backing vocal and, and maybe some instruments. But um, that they were just on tour and talking about like they don't want to have a family. Mm-hmm. Well, that's basically that's it. kind of what I thought too. Because <laughs> it kind of just seems like you. Maybe when we're gone, you can have our bedrooms as your own. Like mm-hmm. we can't find a stable table, so we'll just take our eggs and we'll be on our way. Like we're not here for a long time. I don't need to have a legacy. I'm not here to raise the city up. Right. I don't need we to make not, a baby. Yeah, yeah. That's how I've always taken it. Like, and it's kind of I, I like that. Like, I'm fine with that. Also, do you know what Mammoth Swoon is? Because when I look on Genius, when I get to Penny Licks, it takes me, it says it's track two of Mammoth Swoon oh, by Lady Lamb. I think that's the new re, isn't it? The new album, the huge 35 parter. <laughs> the new re album. That is, of course, in the Mammoth Nothing of the Night. Oh, it just seems like, I don't, I don't know. know if this means it was on an, 
an earlier album and she redid it. That could be. That could very well be. <clears throat> just really confusing and i wish someone would maybe maybe she could because of course some of her backstory is she worked at a video rental store mm-hmm. and would uh record songs on some of their equipment and then the guy who owned the store would kind of she would play it for him and he would kind of say what was good and what was bad and in fact i think the story is that he was sort of the one that was like you this is all really good but it has no structure you should Think mm-hmm. about like making a chorus and having verses and choruses like normal songs. She was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is. I'll, also, We Will Crane Our Necks. Crane Our Necks is from Ripley Pine. So that's a reference. I guess I'll have to look at that. I think she's got a couple references to her own stuff. She does. Which is hmm. interesting. <laughs> You're your own favorite artist. I don't know. I'll have to look at that and see if that's about oral sex. Well, from the other annotation I saw, it might be. So, oh. All right. Knows. Well, maybe she just likes going down or or having others go down on her. Hey, brother, that's fine with me. But whatever you do, please don't do it on my dear <laughs> Arkansas daughter. <laughs> This one's rocking. <laughs> you with the dark curls, you with the watercolor eyes. You who bears all your teeth in every smile. He says, I can always hear. That's just cool. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I'd right. say the album's like a rock album. <laughs> what if I didn't listen to it before this? I like this song. I don't know what it's about. This song's cool. But, uh, it's probably. Like I think it's it about oral. I think that's what when she says, "My heart is full of swords, full of full of swords." Mm-hmm. You can kind of think of that as sort of being. You know, your tongue is the sword and your heart is between engines and your kind of crotula. Yeah, and you have to put it in the sheath. <laughs> yeah. Tie my hands on them on my knees as I kneel down, I kneel down in the sea. To those knees. Full, I will sink like oh a my God, it is. Just full of weapons. Yep. <laughs> on the spine of the tide, you will rise like a red ripe, a red ripe apple. Take, Take a, a swim, swim. In, in the dirty water. That's the interesting part. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know either. I just know that it. I don't care. Fucking rocks. I don't know about. I don't know what a lot of songs I listen to are about. Sure. Necessarily. I, I just like. As my love for you dies. Yep. It's just cool. And the end. With the, the dark girls, you wear the watercolor. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like it. Yeah. I mean, what else do you want from me for this song? It's just cool. It's cool, and it's 
you start out thinking, oh, this is going to be another like kind of a not down tempo because it's still kind of a fast. Little... Oh, I thought that. I know you don't. Here we are. I don't think you understand. Forty-five <laughs> minutes in. I don't think you understand tempo. <laughs> but we'll get to that. Tempo and intensity. My or tempo. What you're doing in that tempo. My tempo. My tempo. Mike Tempo. <gasps> that should be a new character on the show. All right. Whenever you are wrong about tempo, Mike Tempo comes out. Yeah. And he eats milk duds. Credits start rolling. Michael Sarah gets hit in the head with a <laughs> Coke bottle for some reason. <laughs> Hugh Jackman's twi- chin is a ball sack. <laughs> Great song. I love this song. You can try to relax or then your attack when you get back to Brooklyn. Get back to Brooklyn. You can close your eyes for a moment at a time, but in the dark they stay open. Always stay open. My spine gets on my sun. This song cannot be made up. I never loved another person more than I loved you more than I loved you. Now I'm an old song that you once knew. You can't remember me for the life of you, but I hope you find joy in all the things you do and in these songs we sing that are sung solely for you. It gives me goosebumps just hearing it gives me goosebumps just hearing you say it. These are the songs I like. This is one of the reasons I I picked the next band I picked cuz I oh. there are songs of it's kind of a is it nostalgic or sentimental? Yeah. But it's true, right? Yeah. They had this perfect moment. I mean, something went wrong. They fucked up these <laughs> these cushions. Sure, right? sure. But she remembers this person. And I like this idea of moments in our life mm. are songs. Mm. And you can miss, like, I want to hear that song again. But you can't. No. It was for that person that you were with. Mm. Whether it's a friend, mm. a lover, mm. someone that you maybe only did oral with. But that's you have these specific moments, and sh- I like that she, to me, is saying those moments are songs mm. that you. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna quote Lady Lamb right now. Whoa, it's beautiful. You, I'm an old song that you once knew. This person you were with, these experiences yeah. you had, yeah, and right. you can't remember them. It's like an old song that you can't remember. Yeah, but still, I. Go be, go be happy. Yeah. I hope you find joy in all the things you do. And the songs that we sung solely for you, mm. these memories were for you or for us. Mm. That's all you want from a song. Mm. The thing with the Milk Duds is great. Great chorus. Yeah. Great chorus. Catchy. I, and she's, she said, maybe I shouldn't even tell you what she said. Because I feel like you're ha- having a real emotional, personal Fucked. moment with this song. Should make this one's about would buy 
grandpa took me to the petting zoo in the no <laughs> it's just about a childhood friend that this actually happened okay they that's fu- what i thought they found a room in her friend's house that they didn't know was there and they her mother said well you guys can just do whatever you want in it because we didn't even know it existed mm. so they that made was their it, clubhouse they made a little clubhouse and fell asleep on a box of milk duds and i never loved another person than i more than i loved you it's just and it's about it doesn't have to be it's not it could be a romantic partner sure this but it's come, also yeah this will come back later if i remember it okay uh, this is maybe other than uh spat out spit maybe my other favorite song on the album spat out, spit. second yeah. favorite milk dud they're kind of they're they're sort of different they're different styles but, so i yeah. like both of them are up there yeah it's a great great song up there for me as well uh, and I like that it's not it's a happy sometimes there's songs like this and they're so personal like that and they mm-hmm. remind you of things and you go like I can't listen to this all the time yeah it's too close to home yeah or it's just like eh, it's heavy mm-hmm. this is a nice like you said it's nice. about a friend even like I said earlier yeah if you rewind the tape yeah lover oh, friend said. oral so you've got yeah, a song could... about a friend you loved your friend it's not about a relationship, but it's like yeah. remember that time when you were a kid. Yeah, well, that's I I love that. Like, yeah, you. It's kind of even more special in that way that like when you're a six year old kid or what whatever eight year old kid nine year old once you start being like ten it's not as cute. No, because you're starting to go through puberty and you've got yeah. the upper lip hair and you've yeah. got the. Oh, for sure. That, you've got yeah. like, you don't know about that, but you've got right. like this hair right here. Yeah. Just in the middle of your chin, but it doesn't grow here. Mm-hmm. And then it starts growing back here. Right. And it's like, what's going on with that? Yeah. So you've got to got this like three layer th- dip going on, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. But. And it's just like, what are you talking about? When you're young, when you're young enough and you you do have that, your best friend and you're like, it is just like the purest kind of form of love. Mm-hmm. And you don't know that there's the, cause there's not, there's nothing weird about it, but you, you say that as an adult and people are like, what? Mm. Or something like that, you know, but it is, you, you only know three people in your life. And at that moment you've had a fun day in a clubhouse, all your own. You've never known love like that. Mm. That's just an, it's just a cool idea. Only a, only a kid could love like that. Then you go on MySpace, maybe 10 years later, mm-hmm. you find that person, they go, hey, I don't remember you, but my mom said we used to hang out. Mm-hmm. You go, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> at that point, you were 10. Which is... Of course, when you start to get the, the triple layer dip, as I call it. Yeah, yeah. So easily I forgot. I don't know. I like this one too. Sandbox in Arizona kitchen. Same idea. Yeah. I think she. What do you think she was? I think she bottom loaded this album with some bangers. Really? I think the 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 B side is where it's at for me. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. There's strong stuff good. on. I don't know. I'm just saying. Sometimes you listen to the first half of an album and you go, okay, and then there's the rest of it. We get halfway through the album. I'm like, God, I'm only ha- there's a lot of songs on this. I'm like, but this is where. It- this is where it starts to come together. For me. For you. When we are apart, we were wading through the water. Flashlights flickering in the dark. Climbing the laundry poles in the tomato, tomato. garden. Uh. This song doesn't have a, a chorus. I think so. Uh, I don't care. That's why I, I, the guy that uh, what oh, the someone just hit me. 
<laughs> this guy that told her basically you need some choruses and stuff. I don't ascribe to that. Music is music has no rules as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I agree, but I think you sometimes sure to be catchy. I can. I, I'm not gonna sit there and I'm gonna talk with you. Sometimes I want to hear that chorus. I'm That's just saying right. when you don't have it, sometimes like this song. This song, yeah, but it's great. It it paints a vivid picture, and then it ends with. There's a sweetness in us that lives long past the dust on our eyes once our eyes finally close. Mm. And at that point, you say, I need to call my dad. <laughs> Lady Lamb, <laughs> you're done it again. It's just such a, again, I say vivid. Mm. Again, I say vivid. It is, Joey. I like songs like this. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Same. I like when it's these these stories mm -hmm. because they are things that you look back and it's just a because you can relate. You don't have this experience, but you understand the importance of it when you look back. And there's a sort of I wish I would have had that. I wish I would have had these thoughts back then to mm. sit in that moment a little longer. But no one has that. No. Well, you that's why you don't have that until you look back on. Right. Because in the moment, that's not what it is to you. Yeah. But you think of, oh, I woke, you know, I had my best friend with me. I had my sister with me. Yeah. We've grown up. She's with me even when we are apart. That's nice. <laughs> but no. And, Thanks, man. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking, like, yeah, she's not dead. Yeah. But it's a, you grow, <laughs> and you, there, there's these memories they have of, Oh, yeah. this is when me and my brother did this. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like when my mom makes us watch the uh, videos of us as kids all the time. Yeah. 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 That was cute. Yeah. <laughs> but kind of what you were saying, like, you don't you don't think to think of it then. That's what's kind of interesting about my mother. She keeps a journal of her childhood memories as they return. Mm -hmm. My favorite's the story recounting when she saw an eagle with a fish in its mouth. She was 10 and she wrote it down. It's such... That's... So a, a a lady when she's a kid mm. wrote down about seeing an eagle with a fish in its mouth. Mm. And some 20, 30 years later, whatever, uh, probably more than that. Yeah. If, uh, let's say 40. Let's say 40 years later, her daughter's looking at her journal and her favorite, for some reason, it touches her that her mother felt it so important to write down in her journal that it, she saw an eagle with a fish in its mouth. It's just these these human moments of it's it's seeing someone at the at the restaurant eating alone. You feel a a humanity, a connection with these people. She she in this moment finds a a connection with her mother as a child. Mm. From right, like, why? Why would that be your favorite thing that you read in a journal? I'm sure her journal had funny stories. I'm sure her journal had uh, interesting stories about maybe her uncle or her grandma or grandpa telling her to do something, or her uncle grandpa or her on uncle. Cartoon Network. <laughs> yes, but no, it's this sort of mundane recounting of uh, an eagle with a fish in its mouth mm. that touches you so, and it just. God, it's just, you can't even put it into words because she already did. Sorry, Mr. Chance. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. You got anything else? No, this? it's like when yeah. I go to the, I don't know, I'll go to a base, like I think about when I was a kid and I'd go to baseball games. Uh oh. And I have these, just these things where I think back of, I think of... <laughs> I think of yeah, seeing the the players, and I remember thinking, even though I never grew up to be one, I have these great memories of the batter. I took my last breath as the plane crashed. Ah! Do it. Oh, ow! Bum, 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 bum. I don't even.
Come on, get up. Don't let your demons take you to the cleanest. Fix your posture, how you call your mother. Draw a picture, it lasts longer. A body's sacred when it's naked. So go up and let it be a Bible for another. Bloods your compass, let it wander. Can't play the whole thing. What do you think about this song? She's scared of planes, mate. <laughs> I like it. It's not my favorite, but no. it's still good. Every time I hear it, I'm like, yeah, this one's not my favorite. But then it gets to the part where she's like, be do bado, be do bado, be do. And I'm like, yeah, be do bado, be do bado. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. It's cool. And I like the when all the instruments drop out and it's just the drums mm. that we just heard that's cool i like the song i like it it's not my favorite but i like it yeah okay? i like the final the final verse that it goes out on mm -hmm. from the plane i called your name but it didn't matter you were home baking a birthday cake cracking an egg into the batter you had a little bit of batter a little bit of batter on your face just something very specific of this she's scared of the plane going down yeah and she's imagining screaming for someone and it's like they are com their world is completely yes. different to what's happening to you yep. right now in the scariest moment of your life and there's this little detail she puts in about yep. there's a little batter uh, on your face bit of and i was batter. paying a little coy when i talked about the batter at the baseball game i noticed yes. something about cake hey batter 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 on your face cake batter 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 cake batter 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 that would be a good like okay write that down something i don't right? even know what it is but write it down but of course <clears throat> but we finally get to the last track of the song mm -hmm. at last at last we get, we get to, to the, the last, last song. song at last funny how a good thing opens your eyes makes you feel the branches leads you to the pine. this sounds like a final song on an album yeah she's they walked off stage and she came back out with just what? Funny One guitar. Someone singing behind you. Honey. Honey, but I do know Honey, where but. I come from. Chest. And honey, I know where I end up. I got a body for this bed. This song might be about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going, God, this is slow. <laughs> That's the lights. <laughs> yep. And all you've noticed, all her other minions have come back on stage. Yeah. go back out they all leave the stage again 
Yeah. All right. She that's... comes back out with a guitar. You didn't know she left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. Good final song. It's a here. good final song for sure. And I'm just saying, just saying, just saying. Like eyes upon an atlas. Oh, Mama Jamba, you <laughs> naked. <laughs> Oh, I need to study you. Shotgun orchestra. Shotgun orchestra. The needle bends as it spins. I do a different version. And we got skin. We got skin like we were born to swim. Past our scalps in it. And I do. I want to swim the length of this with you. I want to swim the length of this life with you. Ain't that sweet? (laughs) It's beautiful. It is. What a simple way to put it, assholes. I'll make you a map to me. I'll be there in your sights. I won't make me hard to find. I'll be made into a mark with a heart steadied and strong or ready to aim for your arrow, my darling. I know where I come from. Great. I mean, does it get any better than that? Simple song to end the album on. Just a little song about Does love. it get any better than <laughs> that? Oh, Lewis. Did you like the album, sir? Lewis Black, sir. I thought it was delectable. Wow. He ate it. <laughs> Hey, I think Allie ate when she wrote this album. Okay. Not, <laughs> and that's slang that we use right now in the year 2023 to say, like, oh, she ate. Like, she did good. She, yeah, ate, well, she ate it up. And also, to, she had oral. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of this album? I love this album. Okay. I love, I love Ripley Pine. I like... I just haven't given it enough time, even in the tremor. But um, yeah, maybe I should do that, huh? Yeah. But I love this album. This is my favorite of her works thus far. I'm excited for the next project to come out. But I just I love I love her lyrics. I think the music is interesting. It's all, even even the ones where I'm like, eh. You know, maybe that's it's a little too long. It's a little too this. It's a little too that. Probably could have cut this one, tightened things up. But I'm still. It's like it's such a, a clear. In in the sort of in the disarray of all of the little, almost different versions of the same song. Like some songs will be the same verse but it's sped up and it has a different beat to it in the same in the same song you're like god what's that about it's almost like it's on purpose Mm. and you're like yeah it is of course and there's something to that too isn't there i just think the the sort of vast array of sounds and um and tempos and sort of directions she goes Mm -hmm. is all part of her project which is to say isn't the beauty of life in the meandering in the sort of strange places we go in sort of the strange and wicked ways our mind our mind works and takes us from from eating an orange on on the subway to eating subway on an orange Mm -hmm. (laughs) but no you know uh, seeing someone yawning opens opens the whole cacophony of uh, the splendiferous existence of life and uh what we do with it um and where our place is in the world and isn't that isn't that beautiful and maybe sometimes just the the pondering itself is the beauty of life and maybe we don't have answers and maybe we don't need them because we are lady lamb the beekeeper and it's pretty uh it's pretty positive record lana keeps giving us these upbeat little well i just think it's a, it's a, like you said, it's a ponderance of our existence in the universe. But I think it comes out on a largely uh, good, yeah. positive. It's, it's a net like, good that we're isn't around. Isn't this interesting? Yeah. That's what I like. That's where I've landed in my own life. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like you, and you just, like, you're just outside and you just see someone get hit by a car. Yeah. And you're like, it's hmm. like, and you just kind of like, isn't that interesting? Kind of reminds me of when I'm eating a clementine on the bus. I have had that before in real life where I'm like, should I? Well, like I, I some guy like smacked on my window and like yelled at me. He's like, you know, uh, just something that I didn't really do. Okay. And I rolled my window down. And I just looked at him and I went because I was just like, isn't this interesting? <laughs> You're <laughs> screaming and hitting my car. 
Yeah. I didn't really have a, I wasn't, I didn't have a mad reaction to him. I was just like, interesting that we all exist. Yeah. Like it's interesting. This is happening. Yeah. So that's what I love about lady lamb, the beekeeper. Yeah. I give this, I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah. Because I want to listen to her other stuff. And I'm, I am still trying to, I like that. I came out also with, there is stuff that this reminds me of, mm -hmm. but also not really like the lyrics and there's what nothing she's talking quite about, like it. but I like, I like bands there are bands that I listen to where there's really no chorus. And I'm like, it's weird that they did that. It's a, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And I like listening to the stories. I like banjos <laughs> as opposed to what we kind of joked about earlier. Yeah. We said he didn't, but I actually knew that he did. <laughs> I was just joking. When he I said knew that. that I did and that I wasn't going to make fun of him for picking this. Yeah. I knew. Well, look, I just, I, and you know, there are artists that I like more probably, you know, but I do. I, I, I love this artist. I think she's great. She has a lot of interesting things to say. Good find. And, uh, yeah, thanks. And, uh, go oh. support her for the love of God. And I, I listened to, I know we said, we're not gonna, I listened to her newest song just cause I said, what does she this is 2023. What does she sound like eight years later? Right. I don't know. About the same. Yeah. It's a good song, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'll she's check got... out the other albums. She's got some other stuff, uh, some recent stuff, mm -hmm. too, that's, that is good. I think... I don't know. This just strikes me so, so squarely in what I like mm -hmm. as far as musically, because it is catchy. It is kind of poppy. It is kind of rocky. And it is sort of these big questions boiled down into very human and sort of specific, uh, you know, little 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 pops, mm -hmm. little, little pieces you can kind of dissect and think. Yeah. Or if you want to just listen to it, it's just good. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what's great, you know. I do. I like that there's substance underneath. But if I put on billions of eyes and just want to sing along. I can. And of course, I never just put on a song. I'll put on an album from the beginning and listen all the way through. Mm -hmm. I don't do playlists. I'm not going to just pick a song to listen to. I think I'm, I'm with you there, and I don't know why we have to talk <laughs> about this right now. <laughs> I, give it an, I give it an eight. Okay. I might, li I might lift it up a little later, you know, if I, if I go, you know what? And I probably should give it more, but I, again, I just, that's what I'm feeling right now and I have to go with it. Mm -hmm. So, because it is always the question of, is it against just the artist's other material? Cause this is my favorite from her. So it probably should be like a nine. That's what I don't know. And it's like when I'm listening to other stuff that, yeah. um, is no way related to this mm -hmm. musically. It's like, so right. what do I, that's... I like it and I listen to stuff like it. Listen to a lot of stuff that's not like it. So mm -hmm. what am I? I give it a seven. I think that's pretty good. A seven is a great score. For this random bullshit you cast upon me for this podcast. You made me do. I give it an 8.5. He raised his his. I have voice. to. She, she deserves that. She deserves the world. Anyway. Very talented. Good luck to you, Lady <laughs> Lamb, the beekeeper. So what, is it my turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, I, if, I, if I really do think about, like, how am I going to, what what relates to this? Maybe what did it make me think of? What do I want to put first on the podcast we're early in? It's just too much to think about. Okay. But I... You're not I've, I've, picking anything, are you? I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you pick next week. All right, I just got kidding. something. Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, I picked a few things that are in the same genre. I feel like mostly punk. This kind of took us a little farther out of it than even Switchfoot or anything. Yeah. Um, there's there's a few things I'm sort of juggling between, but I think I just need to go with something that was going to come up sooner or later. And I just kind of want to see what you think, too. That's great. I've got some thoughts on it. But here's why I thought of it. Um, Animal blood. They say shotgun in one of the songs. This Whoa. is going to be a little hint. Also, the way they write some of these songs, I'm going to pick it. Oh, first of all, Lady Lamb, the beekeeper. Four words, right? Now it's just two. 
Lady right. Lamb. That band I'm going to pick is a band that was formerly known as Now Now Every Children. Four words. They now just go by Now Now. So the band Now Now, I'm going to go with their most recent album, which is oh. called Saved, which is the most different than the, the their most different album, I think, out of their style that they usually play or will ever play again. I don't know. We'll see. The band's called Now Now. The album's called Saved. I think it's a, a little change of genre on my side of things, just to switch it up a bit, get I something new in there. And also, their singer just put out two new um, single songs under her own name. And one of the songs, one of the, I believe the choruses, which reminded me of something on this album. She said, when I was 13, my cousin took me. Or this is These are the lyrics from this song. When I was 13, my cousin took the car and she drove it to Blockbuster. Aren't you scared to get caught? She said it wasn't that far. I just wanted to be like her. Can't get it out of my head. I just want to be happy again. I feel like that's perfect with like milk duds. Yeah. It's your, it's your cousin. It's not someone that's, it's just you and someone else. And it's like, I want to be like this person. I'm infatuated with them in this, in this loving family way. And I was like, they sing a lot about that type of stuff. This album I'm giving you is a little different. I think I'm going a little poppy. I think with this. So <laughs> is it hippie? This is from 2018. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. I don't know how much just wanted to, to talk about. What? Just want, I just want to. I want to know what you think. Threads. I think I've listened to this. Yeah, that's good. I almost picked that one, but I said I got. I would just want to go with the most recent. Different. It's different than this. I think that one is a little similar to this. Yeah. So I just want to say, let's throw something in there that's. Different. I love it. I love it. Let's do it. Now, now saved from 2018. We'll be listening to that next week on this podcast, your favorite music podcast, Earbuds. Earbuds. Bye. Each week we listen to an album, here's our mind. Just know it's going to take about three hours of your time to hear us complain or praise each other's taste. But no matter what, at the end of the day, we're just best friends who love different music we are earbuds 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 this is earbuds